it's the Monday after the Daytona 500 and I thought I'd do one more NASCAR themed video that I've done a couple over the weekend but Daytona 500 being the first race of the season now of course it wasn't always that way years back the season even started in a prior year and then for many years Riverside California was the first race of the season but I want to talk about my first NASCAR Sprint Cup then Winston Cup race as a spectator the date was May 9th 1981 at Nashville track sometimes now called the Music City Motorplex it's in a fight to survive and certainly hope it does it kinda Sprint Cup outgrew it years ago but still a nice Saturday night short track but let's get down to the race and some of the differences between today's racing and racing a little over 30 years ago Ricky Rudd was driving the Digard Gatorade 88 car sat on the pole had not won a race yet you know later would win some races and some big races at that including a brickyard never won a championship but he takes off at the start Rudd takes off at the start and leads basically the first half of the race and the race goes green through around the pit stops Rudd I just checked this on ultimate racing history and I'm planning on putting a link to this race in the description led 210 laps Darrell Waltrip led one probably during the pit stop exchange it doesn't have the breakdown of who who led what lap but shortly after the first caution and during the green flag stops everybody changed right side rubber two tires during the when the caution comes out and it's relatively minor the race was relatively incident free just some spins don't believe there's any real wrecks but so they all make their pit stops and they change right side rubber again right sides on the next lap they come back in and change left side rubber well here's where it starts Benny Parsons driving the Bud Moore 15 car beats right out of the pits the Melling tools car which also happened to be the sponsor of the race that year he beats Rudd out of the pits. Benny Parsons was never headed after that. And you got to remember, this is the first year they went from using the big Monte Carlos and Oldsmobile 442s, the bigger Buicks, to the 110 inch wheelbase cars. The lot of them were basically the GM metric style bodies. The the uh, Buick Regal was very popular. There were some Pontiac Grand Prix in that era, also some of the downsized Monte Carlos. But Benny Parsons beat Rudd out of the pits on the third pit stop of the night. And it, it's so odd because now they're doing, today they're doing right side, all four tires, qu way quicker than they were doing right side in them days. In fact, they worried, I think the reason they were doing two at first is they worried about getting lapped in the pits. It's relatively, you know, Nashville's a 0.596 mile track. But so Parsons took the lead. Actually, at one time, has the whole field a lap down. They get a caution. The caution closes the field up. And during yellow flag pit stops, Parsons' Bud Moore crew aided by the lack of a pit road speed limit. You got to remember, pit road speed limit didn't come into effect till maybe 1991. And I could not believe how fast. And I'd been to ASA and ARCA races at places like Salem, Indiana, um, the Queen City Speedway, Westchester, Ohio, north of Cincinnati. And I thought ASA especially come in the pits fast. But these Winston Cup cars were unbelievable unbelievable in the pits but Waltrip gets his lap back and Parsons again pulls away has a good lead late in the race and there was no green white checkered in them days JD McDuffie spun bringing out the caution Terry Labonte if I remember right and I'm doing this from memory 
was down on the inside on the restarts. That's when they had the double file restarts with the lap cars on the inside, the lead lap cars on the outside. And Parsons actually missed a shift, but with Labonte there, Waltrip was unable to go down there. And yeah, remember, this is when Waltrip was not very popular. He was not well liked in those days, even though that was his adopted home track. He's originally from Owensboro, Kentucky, but raced his whole career out of front. I think still lives in Franklin, Tennessee. But what I remember about Nashville, you go to the tracks now, there's all these souvenir trailers. Now I think the track had a booth where they sold their stuff, and there was one... I think they called it the Little Red Caboose that sold souvenirs. I remember it was one of Mark Martin's first, if not very first, cup start. He didn't last very long. He's listed as breaking a camshaft and finishing last or near near last place. Some of the other drivers in the race, Tim Richmond, was running Indy. In fact, had to leave for Indy after that race. But he was driving D.K. Alridge's car, D.K. Alridge, an owner driver and later strictly an owner. Um, independent in that race, Richard Childress and Dale Inman had left the Petties after Daytona of 1981. Dale Earnhardt, defending Winston Cup champion, driving the Austrian car, which would later become the Stacy car. And we all know Earnhardt didn't care for that deal and left it to go to Childers and the next year took over the Bud Moore car. But what I remember, they had a kind of, I'm going to call it a carnival atmosphere. They had a fair going on, literally. Rides, of course, for years, the Nashville track had that roller coaster across the parking lot. I rode that thing many times. But it's just, I don't know if anybody cares about this. I just thought I'd do it since it's the first of the season. My first race, and I'm going to call this my first Winston Cup race, or something to that effect as a fan. Yes, I'm going to say Winston Cup race, not Sprint Cup, because in 1981 it was Winston Cup. But it was something I've gone to, of course, on the years I've gone to Cup races, I've gone to as many as six and a few, as few as one. You know, lately I've only been going to one, but it, you kind of like I've heard some drivers say they never forget their first race in a major division, and I'll never forget my first Winston Cup race. And the reason we picked Nashville, three of us went, we took a tent, we stayed at the KOA campground. At that time, of course, Indy didn't have a race, and the Kentucky, it was about, Nashville was about three hours from me, from southern Indiana. And... It was the closest. I guess Michigan would have been the next closest at six hours, and Atlanta's eight. Of course, Indy was another 13 years before they had a cup race. Um, Kentucky didn't come online with a cup race till 2011. I've been to both the cup races at Kentucky. I've already ordered my. I have season tickets up there. I already ordered my tickets, but this this may be a pointless vlog, okay? If it is, it is. But if you think it's pointless, dislike it. I've said before, it don't bother me if you dislike my video. If you do, tell me in the comments why. You know, I'm not gonna get bent out of shape. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna block users in unless you you know, I've said when I start this channel I'll run a clean channel. If you start using foul language in the comments, yes I will block users. But if you say this vlog's pointless. You shouldn't have done it. You should take it down. You know, I'm not going to block you. That's your opinion. I just, I decided, and this is my self-imposed rule, to run a clean channel. It's just been kind of my take on my first uh, Winston Cup Grand National race. It was even still known as Grand National back then.